Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. This is your host Nino inviting you to an episode concerning the ignominious death of a book, 8088 version 2. Now, this is the machine in question. And it has become rather well known in modern times and features in many a video on this channel. This is a sort of modern DOS computer which is featuring here at the side a compact flash card as hard disk and other than that has quite some characteristics of a machine from the beginning of the 1980s such as being driven by MS-DOS and Windows 3.0 as well as featuring 640 kilobytes of RAM and this model here having also a CGA adapter. What was special about the version 2 is that it features a serial port and just as it was engaged in intense communication with another machine, it suddenly turned off. It was just like that. Off without warning. I'm showing this previously. That's weird. So the connection didn't work out. For whatever reason. They're not actually connected. Well. What was that? Okay, this one seems to be misbehaving. Well, theoretically they were connected. Somehow. That didn't seem to go very well. And after it turned off, it would just never again boot correctly. In fact, I may demonstrate that to you. It will not boot correctly now either. I can reattach here its internal battery and I can demonstrate to you what happens when you try to turn this on. Okay, so the battery is connected. Let's put back the compact flash card. I have removed its red little button for a purpose because in today's episode we shall be taking the machine apart. And yeah, turning it on now with the screwdriver gives us the following result. tries to boot snowflakes with the CGA card. So, so far everything fine, but we are having 300 H master not found. Also note up there, the COM1 port is not found. It should be found. Then it says booting A and it will not be able to boot that either. And sometimes it does, sometimes it does not show an error of 20 H which was the first hint that something harsher is amiss. And at first I thought that maybe the CPU is dead or maybe the BIOS is dead. Here you're having the error 20H. And the seller indeed did send me a replacement BIOS as well as a replacement compact flash card, but trying these resulted in exactly the same thing. In fact, I'm now having one of the uh, two cent seller BIOSes. We are not 
able to do anything with this. Not found basic. And adult 20 age, I googled this, means controller failure. Now, controller failure is not the same thing as BIOS isn't there and is not the same thing as no COM1. But indicates rather something along the motherboard, right? And that's where we shall be getting today. So detaching again the battery. And taking a screwdriver. Mm, will this one work? Let's see. Mm. No. Eh, just a moment, let me... You know when you have a lot of screwdrivers? It's like, screw you, which one to pick? Should be some... Not red, not blue, but yellow one. Yeah, maybe that one or a bigger one even. Yeah, that's a good one. So you're having here, looking at the base of it, six screws which you first must remove. Uh, no, nine screws, because also in the middle. Nine screws which you must remove. And I have placed them up there in exactly the way they were screwed in. This is generally speaking quite advisable when you're dealing with electronic parts as they sometimes are having screws which look nearly the same, but are like by a fraction of the millimeter not the same, and then you may run into issues. So always make such a sort of star map when you take off screws. Now you can take carefully, clap apart the machine, so we're turning it facing its front part to us, but beware, you cannot now just fling it open. It goes apart with, without too great difficulty, but still, there is this cable here, which if you fling it open too harshly, you will damage. Also, this cable down here would normally be connected. I didn't uh, reconnect it since my last deconstruction, but that would be another connection point, which however, rather well, you can unplug. Having done so, you see the motherboard. So here you're having the CPU, here you're having the BIOS, and here you're having the sound card. For all I understand, the sound card doesn't matter really. You can leave it attached as well. What you should, however, disconnect are these four screws over here. And then you will be able to lift this and access the back part of the motherboard. Let's do that. You can actually without taking it all apart, just put it a little bit twisted like this, and then you will have access to all four screws just nicely. Another star map. And now the book 8088's underlying part has been entirely disconnected. It does not come off perfectly easily because down there where the serial ports are, it is actually attached to the serial ports. That's a separate board. And you must gently, of course, try to disconnect it from there as well as here from the side, which is why ah, I still have the compact flash card in. One needs to remove the compact flash card. Okay, let's continue trying that. And there we go. Okay, so this did not go very well. <laughs> I um, lost the audio jack. And this can be reconnected, of course, anytime with a little bit of soldering. So this is the part which just uh, broke off. But that's like the least of my issues at the present junction. For here, we are seeing the true reason why the book 8088 has died. 
you see on the back pane here, so this is the area of the CGA card, you're having this programmable logic chip. It seems to be some, the same part at least as these, an ATF1508 chip. So this is something like an FPGA though, a little bit simpler. It could theoretically be forced out of here and replaced, but of course, I don't know what exactly has been programmed there. But as you can clearly see, this chip has molten. So during operation of the book 8088 version two, this chip has simply overheated and self-destroyed. And that of course, that that is even a possibility. I unfortunately regard as quite some design sloppiness. I mean, you cannot really be doing that, that you're having a chip that self-destructs during normal operation. So that, ladies and gentlemen, solves the great mystery as to why my book 8088 version 2 has died. And if you decide to get such a machine, maybe consider what could or could not be done about this chip. Maybe, I don't know, maybe one could glue some sort of copper platter on it with CPU glue or how do you call this, like this, this connector. Maybe something like that could help. But things being as they are, I regard actually the machine, at least in this version, as misdesigned. Such a thing should not be possible. Another thing which I do not entirely like right now is that I apparently have to haggle with the seller over how much refund I should be getting. And that is an interesting thing in so far as the seller was other than that rather cooperative. So I simply assume that in the Far East, there might just not be the same idea of consumer protection and laws on defects of products as we are having, because normally I should be simply getting the money which I invested in the defective part and not have to discuss percentages of the product and net and brut and whatnot. So do keep in mind that even with such catastrophic damage as shown here, that does remain an issue. And with that, thank you for joining today. Together we have solved the book 8088's mystery failure. I hope to greet you here soon again for further adventures. I will continue using book 8088s in some of the experiments, but let's see what I'll do about this question. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider it if you like such videos. Until we meet again, if and when you so decide, I wish you a wonderful time. Thank you for your time today. See you soon and goodbye.